take two. Uh, so, uh, what? I already recorded this, but I'm bad at speaking, so I want to try to do it in a better way. All right. So before we jump into what we're going to be modeling this part, in the last section we we made this made these triangles, and someone commented that, and that was a really good idea. They were able, they did it in a way that um, didn't disrupt their geometry, and I want to show you how to fix it um, because it's a much better way of doing it. So well, let's get to it. Uh, basically, what happened if is if you go to our right side view and zoom into this point, it, it does it does get a little bit blurry because this the resolution of our blueprint isn't super great. But the door sort of does come up to this that point up there where we have this vertice. So we're going to attach the end of this triangle to that point instead of the one below. Um, and to do that, uh, let's I'll show you. Uh, we're just going to select this one vertice above the door, extrude it out a little bit from that top view, maybe bring it up a little bit. And then uh, we, we're just going to fill in this quad uh, right above the door using, using those four vertices, just have nothing new there um, and then to fix this triangle um, what we're going to do it, it might it might seem kind of weird at first is we're going to fill in another triangle using those three vertices right next to the one triangle that we already have and you might be wondering why why are you adding more triangles to, to get rid of a triangle yeah. it's because the fill tool that we've been using to fill in faces has a cool f feature so if the two triangles are uh, set up like this, where you're able to just use four vertices to select both of those triangles, and then you click F to fill in a face, it'll replace those two triangles with a quadrilateral instead. And now, if we try to add an edge loop to that, it goes through nice and neat, and it's a much better um, setup that doesn't disrupt our geometry. So that's nice. Thanks for the comment, dude. Nice, good idea. We are able to do something similar for this triangle up here, uh, but we're just going to leave it like that for now. Uh, so let's go ahead and get continue with our modeling. What uh, the, the things that we're going to be modeling... We're going to be modeling that. You know, just want to keep our high quality of drawings here that we've established. So we're going to be modeling those two pieces, areas, sections. You know, since this already, since I'm re-recording this because bad at doing stuff, uh, I sort of already know, I already have in mind what what sort of shapes we're going for. But uh, it's a good idea sometimes to just take a. Um, Actually, I'll mention this later in a little bit. Like right now. So, we have these edges that, uh, these lines going this way, and we have the edges coming down as well, that way. And then we just have this like big old wheel cutout thing that interrupts or disrupts that those edges. And when we have interruptions or disruptions, I don't really know the difference between the two words, but when we have those, it, when we, if we draw a grid like this, that's sort of the topology edge flow that you want to be like super duper neat, clean. But when we have these like cutouts, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult to maintain that high level of neatness. So there will be, particularly in like, oh, let, me, let me get rid of this so we can actually see. When we have, particularly in these, like, it's, it's a circle, so there's not corners, but um, in those two areas of the wheel, generally we'll have some, that's, that's where these sort of intersect. So we do generally have some stretching in their faces. And so 
basically our goal is to minimize that as mo as much as we can in order to keep a clean model. I'm just going to turn the heat off because it's really hot in here. Alright, um, so yeah, let's just model some stuff because that probably didn't make a lot of sense either. I'm just bad at words. Uh, let's just do this. I'm gonna, well, that's not what we want to do. That's the rotate tool. We use it to rotate stuff. I don't think we talked about it because we don't really need it right now. Uh, I want to select those. Oh, and another cool thing, that's the rotate tool. And if you're in the middle of doing something like this, you left click to confirm. But if you just right click, it just cancels it. So if you change your mind in the middle of doing something, you can just go back. It was completely irrelevant, um, but it might be useful. I'm going to select those four vertices and extrude them out to this outer line across this wheel. We're not going to worry about the inner one right now. We're able to extrude that in once we have the entire shape uniformly uh, later. We'll do that later. So as mentioned, we sort of want to keep this the square grid pattern um, with our shapes as best we can. So this edge sort of continues down here. So we're going to add an edge loop through that face. Then maybe another one for, for this edge. And just fill in that face. I should probably figure out how to use that grease pencil better. And uh, I want to show you something in a sec. Um, so we're not going to worry about that face in a sec for a moment. And we do sort of want to bring this, this, these edges down. So we're going to select those three and just extrude them down. Just realign that. So if we, if here's what I'm talking about, where there's some sort of stretching that occurs at those those two intersections of the wheel because uh, we could add an edge loop here and fill in that but then we have like a face like that or like like that um, or I mean that is not not a good there's a little even more stretching so basically I think I already said this we want to minimize this as much as we can because there will be some stretching in that area, we just want to uh, reduce it as best we can. And um, since I already did this, I uh, sort of know what we want to do, and that's fill in that face and that face. And that, that that's sort of the result, the best result we're going to get, I think. And um, we've already gone over like the sliding tool, uh, so we are able to just use that to, you know, slide some things out of the way to make things a little bit more grid squarey. If you learn anything from this video, just remember grid squares. It's a simple, simple lesson that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it does. It doesn't make sense. Either. So we're just going to slide those into place, uh, something something like that maybe. To make it a little bit more grid squarey. Cool. Uh, and just another thing, uh, obviously, something another thing to keep in mind when trying to keep a clean model is density. So we have this like neat clean roof up here. Then we have this like pillar here, which is a little bit more dense. Sometimes it does need to be. You do have to have more geometry and air to get the details you're looking for. But try to have it be as uniform as you can throughout the entire model. And then we have this, like this big old door section that doesn't really need a lot of geometry. So we could add some, we'll be adding edge loops through that uh, later, but we'll just keep it like that for now. Let's go ahead and uh, work on this rear section forget what I want to do I think 
do sort of want to bring I'm just gonna slide these over somewhere somewhere like that and then just extrude those two vertices down probably should have an edge loop through here That's not. Is that what I did? I think. I think what I did was more better yesterday. Oh no! Be right back. All right. So that just happened. Um. Learn from your lessons. That's a lesson that I never ever learned from. But when you control Z to go back a few steps. If you do it in object mode, it like gets rid of large chunks of work that you do. Um, so if you're trying to go backwards in some some geometry you changed in edit mode, use Control Z in edit mode. I always forget that. Um, that always happens. Okay, but uh, fixed it real fast, and basically what I did here hey message uh, basically what I did here is I just extruded this 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 single single face and it may not look you can obviously tell the different edges um, in our circle like especially that single that single edge right there uh, it is a rather large edge and it doesn't look as circularly as it should be or it could be but it's fine for now it conveys the the shape that we're going for and when we go back to add more more detail we'll be able to um, make it more circly because right now what we're working on is just a base mesh uh, to to work with when we go back to add the more details to make it look like a cool realistic car model uh, yeah so that's that's that Let's go ahead and um, sort of finishes up that area where we talked about the grid pattern thing, filling in faces according to that grid and uh, density a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and work on this front section. The front fender, I think, is what it's called. Uh, I'm going to ignore this top part just for now. Uh, so I'm going to select those vertices that go up to here, Let's extrude them out to that outer line, align them to make them more circly, and again with these these corners, we could, um, that's where the stretching is, so we could, uh, you know, bring that vertice all the way over here, and you know, that's a lot of stretching though, so I'm going to keep that to, uh, back around that point and uh, select those two vertices and then extrude to maybe around this halfway point to the center and then just extrude again line them up and then just extrude again line them up extrude again something like that maybe extrude them to this this line there that's one thing that we've been doing a lot um, that you can learn from is we've been splitting this car up into just manageable sections because car is a large project it's a lot of work it can be complicated but just splitting it up into um, small sections like according to these the panel lines or whatever you whatever works for you just splitting it up uh, makes it easy to work with so let's extrude that down and we get something that looks like that uh, now this front, this, this rear, the, the rear area, if we go to our top view, was was flush with that, but this one it starts to come in a little bit from the top view. So let's go ahead and uh, start moving these vertices into place according to our top view. Maybe something like that works and this is where um that like grid sort of comes in, into uh 
good use because when we're uh, let me see if I can explain this the way I actually want to explain this if we have a lot of stretching like like this and I want to move this it changes the entire shape um, so if we have it more graded we're able to get the curves to look nice uh, and uh, better it's just, it's just a better way to um, have the geometry deform around curved surfaces. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Sometimes I feel like I don't make a lot of sense. Well, it's probably because I don't make a lot of sense. Uh, but let's keep going. Uh, okay, so we have that. It's lined up from our right side view. Looking looking good and jolly from our top side view. Looking good and jolly. So let's go ahead and extrude this, like, this top area piece thing. And this will be nice and easy and fast. Just gonna uh, use uh, Shift to select, Shift right click to select, and just start moving them into place, keeping them as grid squarey as possible. It's the term of the day. Then we use Shift Alt right click to select the entire edge, and bring it into. I think it's probably that line here yeah then just line them up according to that top view and then um, so this lines up with this we, we need uh, another edge loop through this to line up with this keeping that grid in mind again that lines up there so that would go that way we need a, a, a edge through that. Nice, good, and fun. Let's go ahead and add edge loop to that. Go to our front view to sort of give it a little bit of curve. Match that that of the car. Then just fill in these faces. Fill in that face and this one underneath it. Maybe this looks like it comes up a little bit actually. Maybe something like that. And I think I think this should come in a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so basically what I just did there was uh, since we extruded those parts, uh, they just go straight down normally. Uh, and and towards this front of the car, these discs start to come in as it goes down, down the, like that. These go in as they go down. Um, those are triangle or arrows. Um, okay, yeah. Oh, this is good. It's coming along, coming along nicely. I think. Hopefully, um, like I, I want to show you how to make this car, but I also want to show you how to like model anything else afterwards so hopefully the principles and concepts um, I'm explaining those nice and you get those as well so but uh, if, as usual thanks for watching uh, if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the next part we'll probably we'll either do the like the bumpers or the like the top and or the top the bumpers or the the hood hood that's what it's called uh, yeah See you later.